Thank you very much uh, for this introduction and, and for the invita invitation for this um, uh, conference. Uh, let me just uh, take a moment to start the presentation. Okay, so <clears throat> the title of my uh, presentation is uh, Am I Talking to a Human? And by that I would like to immediately start the discussion um, about the state of the art in, in NLP in 2020. Uh, so, <clears throat> so the discussion is uh, whether it is now the, the time that we actually ask uh, ourselves uh, this, this question when we uh, interact with, uh, with machines. Uh, and if so, uh, why and how has the situation uh, changed in, in, in research, uh, recent years? So, um, to start the discussion, let's have, uh, first uh, have a quick look at the historical background on, on NLP. Uh, we have been actually working on NLP since at least uh, 1950s. But what I want to show uh, by this uh, slide is um, how the approach to NLP research has uh, has changed rather quickly uh, through the years. So um, one of the the, the first uh, approaches that was um, applied to NLP was based on uh, on statistics. So this is illustrated by the saying of John Rupert Firth from from the 1950s: "You shall know a word by the company it keeps." So the idea was that um, we need to look at the text itself, uh, at, at, uh, at language itself, and from that language we will discover Im important um, knowledge, important relationships, and um, applying statistical machine learning methods is, is the way to go. But then um, came so-called AI uh, winter in, in 1970s, um, publications by Minsky and Puppert were published where, where they um, criticized or criticized or or have uh, shown um, uh, limitations of, of neural networks. Uh, there were publications by Chomsky who criticized this, this statistical approach to, to NLP. And basically, uh, most of, of AI research um, has, has been stopped by, by uh, stopping funding and um, most research concentrated on applying um, expert uh, linguistic knowledge uh, to, to, um, to processing language. So uh, people concentrated on creating, creating grammars, uh, rules, um, dictionaries, and um, this was supposed to, to give better results than this, this previous statistical approach. But then things changed again in, in 1990s, where more data was, uh, was available, more processing power was available, and it turned out that these old statistical approaches and, and machine learning approaches are starting to give um, better and better results. And um, here for the, for the illustration, we have a, a quote from Fred Jelinek, who worked on machine um, translation, uh, who said that uh, anytime a linguist uh, leaves the group, the recognition rate uh, goes up. So, so this illustrates this, this change in, um, in, in the approach that was applied then, that uh, we don't need this expert knowledge, we are relying more and more on, on, on statistics and on, on the, the language it, itself. So looking at these dates, we may ask ourself, uh, ourselves, um, uh, and we asked ourselves in, in 2010, are we going back to, to the linguistic approach in, in, in this 2010? Because the, this, this would um, uh, be more, the, the most obvious uh, uh, trend here that we are going uh, back and forth uh, between this uh, statistical and linguistic approach to NLP. Uh, are we uh, achieving some, some kind of um, 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 uh, situation in, in which we uh, cannot rely on machine learning alone and we need those this, this linguistic knowledge again to, uh, to move forward. But then 
came um, various new developments about uh, which I would like to, to talk uh, today. And uh, most obviously, uh, deep learning and, and this changed the, the situation in, in the way we are still um, involved mostly in, in uh, machine learning and artificial in intelligence when we are talking about natural language processing. So let's discuss what are the uh, most important developments in the 21st century that uh, that really uh, moved the national natural language processing forward and um, uh, created the situation in, in which we rely on artificial intelligence in, in this uh, area. So in my opinion, there, there are four pillars of, of this situation. The first are the algorithms. So uh, we have the right tools to, to efficiently uh, model the data, uh, to, to discover knowledge from the data. And of course, these, these algorithms are, are not, not at all completely new, but they are um, um, optimized. They are uh, created with these uh, large amounts of data that we, that we cope with today. To, uh, to actually efficiently uh, uh, mine and discover knowledge from, 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 from language. Uh, the, the second pillar is, is uh, the, uh, the big data trend or, or revolution. Uh, the, the idea that uh, we have so much data available now coming from various sources, from, from the internet, from internet of things, from our phones, um, uh, that uh, uh, this enormous amounts of, of linguistic data give us more knowledge than ever before. Next, uh, third uh, pillar is, is the available processing power. So we actually have um, um, processing power to, uh, to discover knowledge in the data. Uh, we can utilize cloud infrastructure. We can uh, use new processing architectures to um, uh, to transform the data, and we are able to process this data in, in reasonable time. And the fourth pillar is, is the need, uh, that is the, the business need um, in, um, uh, for uh, NLP um, methods and um, uh, NLP um, uh, applications that really change the, the, the world and, and the business world and, and services that we use uh, every day. So uh, discussing in a little bit detail uh, these uh, four, uh, four pillars, I would like to start with the algorithms and I don't want to get into very much technical detail here, but just to give the, the intuition what has changed in, in the recent years. Uh, let's stop for a moment uh, looking how um, does the machine see written language? How, how do we represent uh, text when we want to process it, to transform it, to, to uh, mine some knowledge from it? So what we have done uh, just 10 or 15 years ago, most commonly, was to use the so-called bag of words representation. So we just would um, um, count the words that, that were um, in, in a particular text and using uh, such a simple uh, frequency lists and, and, and bags of words, we would feed them to, to algorithms to, to classify them, to uh, segment them, and, and so on and so on. This, this representation is uh, very primitive, and uh, as you may um, uh, assume, it, it, it gives very uh, a large number of problems uh, related to um, ambiguity, to uh, to the to, to lack of, of semantic information in, in in this representation. And what has changed in in recent years is the the approach that that we now uh, seem to um, uh, to apply the most often. Is, and it is uh, uh, actually a comeback to the, to the saying of, of John Rupert Firth in the 1950s. So we are coming back to this idea that we will know a word by the company it keeps, and we actually are doing it uh, uh, in, in NLP. 
So what we are doing now is, is actually we are looking at the words um, and we are looking at the particular window around the words, looking at other words that, that appear in a, in a similar context. So here and, um, shown in green is, is the word it in a movie review. And the word it uh, appears in, in contexts of, of other words, such as uh, movie in, in yellow, fun, recommend, scene, see, scene. And if we, um, if we have enough, uh, a big enough uh, corpus of, of such movie reviews, that it will um, soon appear that this word it in, in, uh, so, um, in this kind of reviews is um, is appearing in similar context than um, uh, than the word movie, so we may say that the representation of the word it is similar to to the word movie because because it appears in similar contexts, and this this intuition uh, used in in real world uh, mathematical representations leads to a very interesting um, thing. It, uh, it appears that um, the semantic uh, relationships between words um, translate to the space of mathematical space of word representations. So if we know that there is a relationship between men and women um, in, in the real world, uh, that is the, the change of, of the gender, uh, that the same relationship holds in the mathematical space of word representations. So we can then uh, somehow calculate uh, new words, find words which um, hold the same relationship that uh, uh, than, than other pair of words. For example, if we uh, are interested in a relationship similar to um, the re relationship between king and kings, we can ask the, the, uh, the representation, what is the equivalent word um, holding this relationship for the word queen? And the representation re responds with the, with, with the word queens. And this is really incredible and, and also um, uh, something magical even happens when we um, ask these representations for other types of relationships. And it, it appears it, uh, it doesn't have to be a, a, um, a grammatical relationship. It can be a real world um, analogy, um, for example, between um, countries and, and their capitals. Um, uh, between um, uh, people and their roles, uh, so so we can uh, given the, the relationship between France and Paris, we can ask the the representation what is the uh, equivalent word for Italy, and it responds with the word Rome, or we can ask about um, Einstein being a scientist, and we get that Messi is a midfielder. So this is this is really magical, and um, and it turned out to be a very important um, milestone in in NLP research in in uh, research recent years. But what we can ask ourselves is uh, how is it possible? Uh, is this algorithm so incredibly uh, intelligent? Well. Uh, the algorithm is, is actually not that new, but what has changed is that um, uh, uh, the, num the uh, quantity of data that we are able to process uh, today is vastly uh, um, uh, higher than what we could do in, in 1950s or even 1990s. So uh, our, our, <coughs> our algorithm knows these relationships because these are relationships are in the data. And we, if we have enough data, we can find it automatically. And this is this uh, second pillar of, of this uh, NLP revolution in, in recent years, uh, big data, which, which allowed us to uh, collect and, and, and process uh, vast, amount of, vast amounts of data. Uh, this illustrated here by the uh, total size of Wikipedia uh, article text in, in gigabytes or the size of uh, um, crawls, uh, common crawls of, of, of the internet, the number of web pages that, that this common crawl project collects, downloads from the internet. Having these amounts of, of data allows us to 
uh, find those relationships that are hidden in the in the language itself in the text itself similarly as as a human as a child le learns um, each year by by reading and, and hearing um, language but uh, the third pillar is is also necessary this um, processing power so uh, so we can actually perform calculations on on petabytes of um, of data one change, of course, was uh, was the change in algorithms and in, in calculation tricks, but actually new processing architectures such as GPU and, and TPU allowed us to um, use much larger neural networks that when that were used in in 1950s that were criticized by uh, by Minsky and Papert. and also we just have uh, much more raw processing power using for example a, a cloud infrastructure and then this allows us to uh, to use this um, not uh, not that new um, um, approaches to um, petabytes of of uh, of text and finally uh, the fourth pillar is, is this business new the business need so um, yeah, natural language processing is not longer tied to to academia research uh, anymore uh, nlp is a core technology for for enabling many products and, and services of today and uh, this research is conducted uh, uh, in in many privately held uh, companies uh, that moves this this research uh, forward faster than ever before and the financing is is much much higher one of the examples uh, that you may uh, know from everyday life is is um, are, are these uh, so called um, uh, voice assistants uh, either uh, on your phone or as a standalone device so um, as you probably know these assistants are created uh, both uh, by um, google and amazon but also on your phone by by samsung and many other companies so uh, and and this uh, this application is um uh, is an example of of um, uh, um this progress in in nlp that uh, uh, that was made in research recent years by uh, solving so many nlp tasks in in one device because then the voice assistant um solves um at least the problem of voice recognition so so you can uh, actually and the machine can actually uh, transform your voice in, into into text uh, it solves the problem of um, of a chatbot so when you um, talk to it uh, the uh, the machine understands um, your intention and the objects that you are talking about it solves the problem of question answering so when you ask it a question it uh, it, re it responds and many many other problems just in one device uh, that had to be solved for this device to be successful and uh, um, uh, talking about this example for a, for a moment, I would like to uh, focus on on um, on these NLP problems. So one uh, one pro problem mentioned is is the the problem of um, of a dialogue agent, so commonly uh, called a, a chatbot that you may know from from web pages or or these voice assistants. So the idea is that uh, uh, we uh, talk with uh, with uh, with a chatbot like with a regular person, and um, uh, and the answers are generated based on on our um, on our questions. Uh, there is uh, the, the, this, um, there is a memory of the dialogue. There is a state of the dialogue. So the machine uh, knows the context and knows what it has been asked before to, to generate new new responses. And this was all possible thanks to um, advanced language modeling that is uh, um, that is taking place nowadays. Uh, the, uh, so we are able to uh, get these large amounts of data, these petabytes of data, and create create language models, uh, which um, uh, extract this this knowledge about about language itself. 
and um, uh, various uh, additional processing uh, steps that that allow us to uh, discover the the intents of uh, um, uh, of a person that is using the chatbot, the entities that are being related to the context, and performing actions that are um, requested by the user. And this, uh, uh, this example of, of a chatbot or a uh, voice assistant also brings us to the problem of, of previously mentioned question answering. This is another problem that is um, quite well um, being solved uh, right now by various uh, also commercial services. Here is the example of, um, of the Google search engine when, where you can just ask, when was Lincoln born? And uh, this search engine will correctly identify that you are talking about Abraham Lincoln and, and show his, his photograph. It will correctly um, find the answer to your question and, and print it in large letters here. And also uh, come up with, um, with other related questions. So th this is a uh, um, uh, step... Um, uh, in, uh, this is the, the more specific uh, NLP task that needs to be solved um, uh, for those voice assistants to, to be working. But still, we have a lot of uh, smaller pro problems that had to be solved for this question answering to, to be working correctly. So we have the, the problem of... Um, named entity recognition, uh, the, the, the problem how to identify that Lincoln is a person and it, it, it is Abraham Lincoln, uh, the problem of um, analyzing the structure of, of the sentence and identifying that uh, we are actually talking about the, the time of, um, uh, of birth of Abraham Lincoln and the problem of extracting information from, from various sources, uh, probably from Wikipedia and other uh, web uh, sources, and um, uh, finding in, in long strips of, of text that, uh, that the actual birth date of Abraham Lincoln was um, uh, February 12th. So this is all um, very interesting. Um, but the, 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 the example that is probably um, more related to, to, to the topic of this conference um, is an example of automatic cyberbullying detection. So this is one of the tasks that, uh, that were organized um, uh, during the uh, Poleva competition that was already um, uh, mentioned in the, in the introduction. So in, the, in, in 2019, we had this uh, task of, of recognizing um, cyber bullying on the internet and um, a training data containing examples of, of such cyber bullying was, was presented to, uh, to participants of the competition, uh, such as um, annotated examples of disclosures of uh, private information, personal attacks, threats, blackmailing, ridiculing, gossiping, and so on and so on. And the, the task of the participants was to come up with uh, with the algorithm and method, the model that that would uh, automatically uh, identify such examples, and annotate them in in particular categories, and it turned out that it um, went fairly well. We had um, a very um, large interest in the task, um, and um, the the results were results were very promising, and further enhanced by even newer models, um, these uh, so-called language models um, yeah, that are being developed still and are being evaluated on this data set uh, denoted here as CBD, where we have um, an accuracy of, of um, over 70% of, of identifying such, um, such mentions of cyberbullying in, uh, in, in, in an unstructured text. So this is, um, this is very promising. And uh, one of the hot topics uh, in NLP is, so of course, uh, lang natural language uh, generation. Um, uh, this is uh, even... Uh, uh, even more known uh, now as um, this open AI group announced that uh, one of the uh, language models that they developed, namely GPT-3, 
um, is um, is so advanced that it's too dangerous to humanity to to actually release it. This is of course uh, uh, somewhat a, uh, a publicity stunt, but actually. Um, these models are, are really getting better and better and um, are trained on more data. So you can um, probably uh, um, test them yourself on the internet just, just uh, looking for GPT-2 uh, or GPT-3 and, um, and it will complete your uh, sentence uh, just by uh, looking at uh, statistical probabilities in the language model. And this, this example is, um, is of course, um, uh, wrong. So uh, we are asking the model um, somehow where uh, was uh, Lincoln born, asking it to complete the sentence Lincoln was born in, and the predictions are in, in Germany. And that is uh, no, because um, yeah, this, this, uh, this test is made on, on an older GPT-2 model and um, a smaller data set um, but also this model is, is actually uh, not trained uh, for question answering, but, but rather for, um, for continuing um, a sentence that, uh, that were provided by the user. And these, uh, these um, examples of, of NLP applications uh, are, um, are appearing in more and more uh, business uh, applications and, and academia uh, related projects. We could discuss them um, in, um, um, uh, in, in, in large quantities. But one uh, important uh, application that I would like, uh, I would like to uh, point to is also um, uh, the uh, combination of um, uh, um, image recognition and natural language processing. So what, what we can do now is, is also combine those methods that are, were developed for image recognition and train models that are able to automatically label and, and even describe um, images, photographs, uh, that are able to, to describe the situation uh, that is um, not only the, the objects, but, but also uh, the, the situation that is taking place on, on, an, on a photograph. And this is also a very uh, important application that, that allows, for example, uh, creating documents that are um, readable by, uh, by people with disabilities. And this is one of the projects that I'm working on uh, right now. So in conclusion, uh, NLP has, has uh, come a long way um, to, to this date, but the, just the recent years um, uh, had the great share in, in this revolution uh, based on those um, four pillars of, of algorithms, of um, available processing power and available data and, and the business need that, that, um, that, it drive, that is the driving force of, of, um, of this um, um, of this work on, on NLP. Thank you very much.